my name is Kyla Galloway and I'm currently studying fashion marketing at Leeds Business School situated at Leeds Beckett University. In this vlog you will view me discussing and reflecting on everything I have learned so far in my foundation to marketing module this semester. For the following 10 minutes I will cover three main assessment objectives. Firstly I will discuss marketing organisations and their orientation. Secondly, I am going to challenge and compare the contrast between marketing myths with reality. And thirdly, my ability to reflect on the lessons. So let's begin. What is marketing? According to the Chartered Institute of Marketing, marketing is the process of anticipating, identifying and satisfying customer requirements profitably. In other words, marketing is identifying a service or product that business or people may want or need. On going from that process, through advertisement strategies, we are then able to promote the product or service to potential customers. Marketing is done through a variety of methods, such as social media, magazines and freebies. For example, as part of a starter pamper pack, I received this soap and glory um, pan food from a collaboration between UCAS and feelunique.com. After using the product, I then went on to purchase the full-size product, valued at $8.95. This is a prime example of how market research was conducted and incorporated into a business plan in order to increase profits for the organisation. Marketing places the customer at the heart of all its business decisions, meaning that it's not just a function of business, it's a way of doing business. The marketing philosophy states that marketing is the responsibility of everyone involved within the organisation. All contact with customers or potential customers should carry out a consistent message throughout if not, and mixed messages are given, it provides a distorted image to potential customers or current customers and could damage the organisation's future growth. Therefore, in order for marketing to be effective, it needs to work as an interface so it will bring about the greater overall impact for the organisation and audience. Organisations that place customers at the heart of all its business decisions are said to be market orientated. According to Richardson, James and Kelly, being market orientated consists of understanding current and future customer needs and wants in order to develop products and services that offer value for customers, distinctive from the offers of other companies which can be profitably produced. Hence why companies must recognise the importance of continuing research in the marketplace and ongoing relationship with customers. There appears to be many benefits of being a market orientated company such as the increase in sales, enhanced reputation and the attraction of new customers. Now I'm going to discuss the four traditional orientations companies use in bid to reach success. These orientations are recognisable in the market and determine how well the business operates and how it attracts sales and its success in doing so. The first of the four is sales orientation. This strategy looks inwards at the business and its need to sell product or services rather than satisfying what the customer wants. This philosophy assumes that customers are reluctant to purchase, therefore rely on intensive promotion such as advertising, discount and brand awareness in order to enforce sales. An example of a sales orientated company is ASOS. ASOS is an online fashion global destination which retails some of the most current and most popular fashion items all in one place. ASOS heavily rely on promotion, customer loyalty, online communicators such as celebrities and bloggers and then other major fashion brands in order to achieve sales. In a bid to boost sales, ASOS recently launched their own product line of clothing to showcase it alongside some of the current most popular on-trend items resulting in ASOS developing its own brand identity and respect through the alliance of others. This strategy can also be recognised in other retail such as House of Fraser and Harvey. The second of the four orientations is product. A company that uses product orientation has a philosophy of stack them high and sell them cheap. They choose to ignore customers and their needs and just to focus on developing a high quality product at the right price. These companies work with a high volume and low margin concept and an example of one would be Heinz. The third out of the four is marketing orientation. Marketing orientated companies work by a business model that focuses on delivering products designed according to customer desires, needs and requirements. Companies that take this approach often end up being market leaders and their marketing activities consist of lots of market research, promoting loyalty and seek to sell benefits and add value for all customers. 
I believe this is the most important marketing approach due to rising competition introduced by online retailers. A personal example is that I would rather shop online at feelunique.com opposed to the usual super drug or boots, mainly because of the frequent recommendations I receive via email based on my purchase history, as well as the point system they have in place and the student discount. This makes me feel like a priority and makes me want to invest my money in their company. The final of the four is product oriented companies. These companies work by adding to existing ideas despite it being what customer want or need. These companies believe that due to the high quality of their product, they no longer need to spend money on market research as they believe their brand or product is superior and therefore the customers will automatically like it. However, this is problematic as superiority alone does not sell a product unless it satisfies the customer want and needs. An example of a product oriented company is Apple. They released the latest iPhone 7 in 2017 despite a perfectly working iPhone success in existence. Amongst the launch of the iPhone 7, one of the newly added features was wireless earphones. Although these sound revolutionising and, let's be realistic, solve that everyday problem of tangled up earphones, you still have to charge those earpods up and pay an additional cost? Could you imagine losing them? Doesn't seem so smart in the end. However, Apple just saw this as another profitable opportunity regardless of the customer's approval or disapproval. But why do we continue to buy these products? Well, this leads us on to discussing the marketing myths. The first marketing myth that I am going to explore is that a strong brand is invincible. Well, back in 2010, BlackBerry Mobile was bringing in over $5 million revenue per year. They were the most popular devices and were truly dominated by the cool factor with every celebrity and every major businessman owning one. With a range of devices and prices, it meant that everyone, whatever the age, could have one. The BlackBerry Messenger was also a key feature and popular amongst both teens and adults. It was one of the first successful messaging apps and was truly revolutionising by... However, when the revolutionary touchscreen smartphones hit the market, BlackBerry Mobiles quickly turned into an antique device. BlackBerry believed that their phones would survive due to their keyboard feature, hoping that it would still attract a professional and business oriented crowd. However, they were wrong and years too late. BlackBerry's failure to adapt is a prime example of when a technological breakthrough occurs and a strong brand fails to innovate in a consumer technology market. On the other hand, since the shift from BlackBerry to Apple, Apple has dominated the smartphone market with over 94% of the smartphone interface process going to Apple. Apple's most recent launch of the new iPhone 7 contains some new features that not everyone liked, for example, the wireless earphones. Although it wasn't what we wanted, and despite the critiques, we are already seeing a rise in people embracing the new product. Like so, many Apple customers will continue to buy the latest Apple device, despite knowing that the chargers always break and the screen smashes easily. The brand strength is almost able to control our decision and spending, supporting the theory that a strong brand is invincible. The second marketing myth that I'm going to analyse is that advertising always affects sales. This is only true if the advert becomes successful, however, it isn't always a positive effect on sales. An example of advertisements affecting the company's sales in a negative way was after Victoria's Secrets made the mistake in their campaign stating the perfect body placed over an image of numerous skinny girls. This fired great deals of anger throughout the female population and peaceful protests begun. It resulted in damaging the brand's image and popularity amongst many. On the other hand, Cadbury's Gorilla advert had an astonishing effect on sales. Whilst the advert was aired, weekly sales went up by 9%. Both of these examples show for and against arguments that marketing always affects sales. The third and final marketing myth is that a satisfied customer is a loyal customer. This marketing myth is not true. For example, this year my phone contract com come to an end and despite being with Vodafone for the past 24 months, I was quickly able to switch to a new network, EE. Despite being a satisfied Vodafone customer, EE offered me the best deal for what I want at the time of purchase, so without much further consideration, I switched. This is something we see in, in the market all the time. If there's a better deal, us customers 
We'll go get it.